first is in the remainder zero. Okay, here is our remainder zero. Um, this is straight out of your book, the way this is written. Okay, um, you have a polynomial, is what it's saying. Um, at least a first degree polynomial, so you have an x there. Um, C is a real number, so any real number for C. Um, if P of x is divided by the term x minus C, notice we were just doing division by x plus 1, x, x plus 1, 2 x plus 1 half. Okay, the remainder is P of C. Now, notice P of C is if we plug C into the polynomial. We are doing an example of that down below because I know when you all just use letters to explain the whole thing, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So let's try to make it make a little more sense. Um, we have our polynomial down here, okay, g of x. So they said, say you have a polynomial g of x, okay. It's, it's at least degree 1, so it fits the bill there. And c is a real number. Our c is going to be 2. So it says, say we have 2. When p of x, or when negative 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 3x plus 12 is divided by x minus c, or in this case, our c was 2, remember? So we're going to divide, if we were to divide that by x minus 2, the remainder of that would be the same as plugging 2 into that function, or g of 2, okay? So let's check to see if that's true. Let's find g of 2 our normal way, which means we just plug 2 in for x everywhere. And then we'll check to see if synthetic division gives us the same answer. So we plug 2 into that. Here's what we have. Okay, 2 to the third is 8, so then we have negative 2 times 8 plus 4 times 4 minus 3 times 2 plus 12 gives us negative 16 plus 16. This is what we're used to doing. Minus 6 plus 12, which gives us 6. Right, let's try synthetic division and see if they're saying that the remainder using synthetic division and x minus 2, the remainder should be 6. They're saying that will give us a little shortcut so we don't have to plug the number in. Okay, so synthetic division, let's write down the coefficients. We had a negative 2, 4, negative 3, and 12. And we're doing synthetic division with 2. Because if we set x minus 2 equal to 0, like we did when we prepare those, we get x is 2 for our division. Let's see what we get. Drop the first number straight down and multiply. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 4 plus negative 4 is 0. Multiply 2 times 0 is 0. Add, we get negative 3. And 2 times negative 3, negative 6. We add, we get 6. We'll look at that. Our remainder was 6. So dividing by x minus 2 was the same as plugging 2 into our function. And we're going to use that fact so that rather than plugging a number into the function, we just do synthetic division instead. Okay, so on your assignment, you will have some questions that look similar to this that ask you to use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find each of these following things. So they want us to find p of negative 1. If we were to use synthetic division and the remainder theorem, that told us that instead of plugging negative 1 in for x, we can also find the answer by doing synthetic division with negative 1 and our polynomial. So I write down the coefficients. Um, everything is there, so I don't have to put any zeros in. Okay, and let's try that out. First one drops straight down, and we multiply, add, and multiply, add, and multiply. 
add. Excuse me. <laughs> Negative one times zero zero. Add to get to three and multiply to get negative three. We add and we get two. Remainder is negative two, so we know that P of negative one, if I were to plug negative one in there, my answer would be negative two. And you can check that. You can try it out and see if you get the same thing. Um, you absolutely should. Okay, let's try this next one. P of three. So again, we're going to do it using synthetic division instead of the way that we did it originally, which was just plugging three in for every value of x. Um, write down our coefficients. I'm going to spread these out because I've done this problem before <laughs> and know that the numbers get kind of big. Okay. Drop the first number straight down and multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. And add. 2 plus 12 is 14. And multiply. 3 times 14 is 42. And add. Negative 3 plus 42 is 39. And multiply, 3 times 39 is 117. And add, negative 1 plus 117 is 116. And multiply, 116 times 3, this is getting big, is 348. And add, 348 plus 3 is 351. And multiply, 351 times 3 is 1,053, and add, we get 1,054. So when we plug in 3 for every value of x here, we should get 1,054. The other way we can do it, as we just did here, is by using synthetic division. Okay, so those are the problems on the assignment that will ask you to do synthetic division and using a remainder theorem.